Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 7th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. Today I published a quick diary with uh, some security related DNS uh, records. Uh, now, for example, CAA records uh, that uh, I don't really see used a lot, but certainly something that you should uh, consider. A couple readers are suggested additional records that I didn't uh, sort of include in the original post. I'll probably add them after recording uh, this uh, podcast. If you do have others, uh, please let me know. I may do some follow-up uh, maybe next week or so. If I don't find any good data, I probably have to uh, collect it myself about how frequently uh, these particular records are being used. And remember how Microsoft apparently had one of its consumer keys stolen that led to the compromise of several email accounts a month or two back? Well, uh, we now have a summary from Microsoft that outlines how this particular key was stolen. Now, good for Microsoft to be open about this and uh, to tell us what exactly happened. What happened according to Microsoft was that a system that held this key, which was in a very isolated environment, as uh, Microsoft describes it, crashed as a result of the crash, a crash dump was created and the key was not redacted from the crash dump dump as it was supposed to be due to a race condition. Later, the crash dump was then moved to a less isolated environment for debugging purposes, again, assuming that there was no sensitive key material present in the crash dump. In that more open environment, the threat actor was able to access the crash dump with that the key using a compromised Microsoft engineer's account. Overall, this sounds plausible, and uh, certainly uh, the chain of events is something that, yes, you know, can happen. They have resolved uh, this race condition that prevented the key material from uh, being removed. What I find still sort of kind of interesting is that the threat actor was actually able to find this uh, key material because, well, uh, that's uh, not necessarily something that sort of easily sticks out in a crash dump. And then we got a couple of uh, patches and vulnerabilities to talk about. Uh, first of all, an update for Android was released. That's the standard monthly update. Noteworthy in this update is CVE 2023-35674. This is a privilege escalation vulnerability that apparently has already been exploited in some limited targeted attacks. Now, this isn't the only privilege escalation vulnerability being patched here, but the only vulnerability that's actively being exploited right now. There are also a couple of uh, code execution vulnerabilities being uh, patched uh, with this update. Some of them do not require any user interaction. As always, for Android updates, apply them as they become available for your particular device or your particular carrier. Google also released an update for Google Chrome. Of course, that's now sort of a weekly occurrence for high rated vulnerabilities are being addressed here. Nothing sort of outrageous that uh, is in particular sort of noteworthy. There are some vulnerabilities, for example, that allow some read access uh, to out of bounds memory. In order to exploit this, an attacker would have to convince the victim to visit a specially crafted HTML page. Get it updated, and as usual, you know, once a day, make sure that you are restarting your browsers. And then we have an interesting vulnerability in Atlas VPN. This, like any other VPN, of course, is often used in order to hide the real location of the user. The vulnerability does allow the immediate termination of the VPN tunnel, which then would expose the victim's real IP address. In order to terminate the VPN connection, a specific HTTP endpoint has to be accessed. That's done with a simple form submission to 127001 
port 8076 and uh, that's the api for atlas vpn that will then stop uh, the vpn tunnel interesting vulnerability also and we have seen these sort of uh, built-in uh, HTTP apis often uh, being abused uh, like this if they're not careful how they are are accepting uh, connections. This is essentially sort of a cross-site request forgery type of vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. If you happen to attend SANS Vegas this week, I'm not there, but uh, say hi to Jason Lamb. He is uh, teaching the Defending Web Application class that I'm teaching this week in London. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow.